Welcome to Professionalism and Standards Part 1. This is a four-part PowerPoint series, so be sure to watch all four parts. Here are the objectives for the four parts of the series. We're going to discuss the historical development of the profession of nursing. We're going to describe the standards of nursing practice. We're going to identify legal, ethical, and professional concepts in nursing. We're going to identify nurse of the future competencies and Maricopa standards. We're going to compare the different healthcare delivery systems. We're going to summarize the qualities of a leader, and we're also going to explain health and illness and disease prevention. So what is nursing? Nursing is a profession dedicated to helping people and it's been around since humans began. There wasn't always a name for what we do as nurses and the profession may have evolved throughout the centuries, but the act of caring for people has always been around. What we consider nursing now was started by Florence Nightingale. She is considered to be the founder of modern nursing because of the way she changed caring for wounded soldiers during the Crimean War by focusing on hygiene and better conditions in the hospital. Her definition of nursing was to put the patient in the best condition for nature to act upon him. She believed that people needed better care to improve their illness and achieve health. She was the first person to actually focus on health and illness as a separate aspect of a person. When the war is over, she started the first nursing training school and started the first education standards for training nurses. Florence also made nursing an acceptable and respected professional for women. Florence continued to positively affect nursing, allowing more nurses to shape the profession of nursing until it evolved into what we think of nursing today. In 2021, the American Nursing Association defined nursing as, nursing integrates the art and science of caring and focuses on the protection, promotion, and optimization of health and human functioning, prevention of illness and injury, facilitation of healing, and alleviation of suffering through compassionate presence. Nursing is the diagnosis and treatment of human responses, and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, groups, communities, and in recognition of the connection of all humanity. So you can see how much we have changed in just our definition from what Florence Nightingale described us to be. So how did we go from Florence Nightingale to what we think of nursing today? Well, we had a lot of change in the world over the last 200 years that really shaped nursing to be what it is today. So take a good look at the job description for a nurse from 1887. Nurses basically maintain the environment for the patients, ensuring that it was clean, we had the appropriate temperature and lighting, and if we were lucky, we got a day off. Nursing was a completely female dominated job and everything we did was under the control of male hospital administrators and physicians. There was little respect, which is why it was so powerful that Florence changed us to be a respectable profession. It helped elevate women in society. World War II was a major catalyst for nursing to change to what we know of it as today. Pre-World War II, most women stayed at home, raising the kids and maintained their house. Once the war hit, large numbers of women started working outside of the home and the independence of women skyrocketed. Even so, there were very few professions for women. They were able to teach, be nurses, or do secretarial work. War victims coming home created an explosion of technology and medical advances, which required more nurses to treat the patient. These patients would have died previously, but were now surviving their war wounds, leaving long-term medical issues that had to be addressed. This major change in the role allowed nurses to create what we know today. We created our own body of knowledge. We created a code of ethics for how we treat our patient, and we got a professional organization that set our standards of care. These changes solidified nursing as a profession and not just a job. Now, depending on the setting we work in, we can work three days a week, we can set our own schedule, we can manage our own business, we can manage very complex critically ill patients like in this picture on the right, and we can keep people feeling beautiful. Nursing is truly a profession now. 
And one of the best aspects of nursing is there, there's so many things we can do as a nurse. If we get tired of one specialty or we get burned out, we can change roles without having to change a profession and start all over again. Very few professions can say this. And we have Florence Nightingale to thank for this. Besides just caring for people, nurses do a lot of things. We advocate for the best care for our patients. We follow evidence-based practice guidelines. We collaborate with the entire healthcare team and so much more, as you can see on the slide. Even though we do so many things, the person we are caring for is at the center of all of it. So nursing is an interesting profession unlike other health professions. Other professions have a set entry level degree requirements, but nursing does not. Take physical therapy. To be a physical therapist, you need a doctorate degree as the entry level to the profession. In nursing, we have diploma programs that offer nursing education without earning a degree. We don't have many of them anymore, but we have them. We have associate degree programs that give you the education you need to become a registered nurse while earning associate degree, which is what you're in right now. We have bachelor degree programs where you can get your degree and earn a bachelor's degree at the same time. We have RN to BSN programs that allow nurses without a bachelor's degree to earn a bachelor's degree. We also have graduate or master's degrees that allow nurses to work in higher level roles like leadership, advanced practice, and even education. We have doctorate level degrees in nursing. However, there are no regulations on what type of degree a student must have to become a nurse. As long as the requirements for the nursing education are met, the level of schooling does not matter. Another education topic in nursing is continuing education. Nurses never stop learning. Once you finish your degree, you are not done. Some states require nurses to complete continuing education credits or CEUs to renew their license. Some nurses choose to become nationally certified in their specialty area, and these certifications require CEUs. Healthcare systems have nurse educators who provide in-service education for nurses related to the newest evidence-based practice, new equipment, new technology, or services. Nursing truly never stops learning. This benefits our ability to grow and learn as a nurse and as a person. We are continually improving ourselves through learning. As part of your admission to the nursing program, you all had to read and acknowledge the Maricopa Nursing Student Handbook. This handbook is your standards of practice as a nursing student attending a Maricopa County Community College nursing program. For the next two years, you will live and breathe this handbook as you learn to become a nurse. These standards will allow you to have an easier time entering the world of healthcare as an RN because you have been living by standards while in school. If you do not fully read the book, I strongly suggest you take time to read it. You will be held to these standards. Maricopa Nursing follows the Nurse of the Future competencies developed by the Massachusetts Department of Higher Education. These 10 competencies, evidence-based practice, patient-centered care, professionalism, leadership, systems-based care, informatics and technology, communication, teamwork and collaboration, Safety and quality improvement are the 10 competencies we evaluate you on during the program. Learning and functioning in these 10 areas of competencies will help you grow into a safe and competent nurse. When nursing started to evolve into a profession as we know today, many professional nursing organizations were formed. These organizations serve the nursing profession in many ways, but all with the goal of ensuring we provide the best care we can. We have international organizations like Sigma Theta Tau and the ICN or the International Nursing Organization. We have national organizations like the American Nursing Association or the ANA and the National Leagues for Nursing or the NLN. In addition to these, we have specialty nursing and interest groups like the American Association of Critical Care Nurses or AACN. These groups improve patient care and places of work for nurses by advocating for us and advocating for our patients. 
During COVID, the ANA and AACN worked hand in hand, trying to get PPE to hospitals so frontline staff weren't exposed. They both advocate for safe staffing ratios and regulations against workplace violence. These organizations are very important to our profession. And as you grow in your role as a nurse, you will join some of these organizations. Part of being a profession means we have standards and ethics we need to abide by. The ANA has a scope and standards of practice that dictates what we can and cannot do as nurses, even differentiated by our roles and our degrees. It's very important for nurses to know their scope and to not step out of it. In addition to the ANA, there is a National Council of State Boards of Nursing who dictates what's on the NCLEX, which is the national license ex exam required to become a registered nurse, and works with each state board of nursing to determine the Nurse Practice Act. The Nurse Practice Act spells out the scope of practice, the regulations, and standards for nurses in that state. The State Practice Act also defines the licensure status and revocation of licenses for LPNs and RNs. Some issues nurses face that can have their license revoked are drug and alcohol abuse, fraud, deceptive practice, criminal acts, negligence, and if there were previous disciplinary actions by other state boards of nursing. We also have a code of ethics we have to uphold. Nurses are one of the most trusted and ethical professions because we hold our ethics and values in high regard. We need to look and act professionally. We need to be on time. We need to treat people with dignity and respect. We act caring and we are sensitive to cultural differences. Another guideline we have in nursing is the nursing process. We'll talk more about the nursing process in depth, but a brief overview is the nursing process dictates how we care for our patients. It's the scientific process for the why behind our care. This is the end of part one. Please continue with part two.